Hey everybody, Fallout here, and today I'm giving you my very cluttered guide on how to reach Fabled rank in D2 Competitive, so you can get either the Luna's Howl or the Mountaintop if you haven't gotten it yet. If you're wondering if I'm qualified, I'd like to think that I am. I've played a ton of comp in D2 ever since launch, and lately on Twitch I've been helping my viewers and followers reach Fabled and get their Luna. Figured I might as well take that knowledge and share it here. Feel free to use the comment section of this video as a kind of comp LFG resource, and be sure to check me out on Twitch if you're looking for a shot at a comp carry. Okay boys, a lot of information here. I am really going to try and keep it kind of organized. If you're looking for a specific bullet point, check out the timestamps below. You can go down, see where I talk about a certain topic, and then you can just go ahead and start the video at that point in time. Bullet point number one, play with teammates. Yeah, I know, it is possible to get the Luna or the Mountain top on your own, but playing solo makes things harder. You need to be able to communicate with your team on the regular if you want to win more frequently. That's not always easy though. Problem number one, I don't have any friends who want to play comp with me. That does suck. I'm sorry to hear that. You have to try maybe using LFG. I know, if you use LFG, you could get bad teammates who are loud, you could get people who are mean, and it doesn't work out. Keep trying. Eventually, you may find someone cool and boom, permanent new teammate for you to play with. You can meet people in Twitch chats, you can meet people on Twitter or in forums. You gotta put yourself out there. Playing with other people is way easier than playing comp alone. Problem number two, you have a really good friend who wants to play comp with you and they are bad. You kind of want to play without them because they're bad, but their feelings might get hurt. That's a hard one. As long as they're willing to learn and adjust their playstyle to try and win, I say keep going with them. If they're loud, easily frustrated, annoying, and they don't want to learn and they don't want to improve, then you might minimize game time with them and play with other new people. And if your friend gets mad that you're playing without them, just be like, hey look man, when we play together, you get tilted really easily. It just drains all the fun out of the game, and uh, we always lose. We gotta mix things up. Tough situation. Talk it out. You can figure it out. Okay, moving on to in-game stuff. Why don't we talk about bullet point number two, loadouts. You don't have to use meta weapons, but using weapons that are clearly very good on paper is going to help you. How do you know what weapons are good? Okay, either watch people on Twitch who are very well known for playing PvP and see what they use when they are playing to win. At the timing of of this video, I can recommend a whole bunch of weapons, which I will do now, but remember, the sandbox will change, so keep that in mind. Oh, clarification before I recommend anything. Any weapon I recommend, any subclass, any tactic, that doesn't mean it's the only thing that works or it's the only thing that's good. It's only my recommendation, you can do whatever you want. Good hand cannons. We got the Ace of Spades, the Trust, and the Kindled Orchid. Can also go Sturm and Drang combo if you're feeling crazy. Pulse Rifles, Redrix's Broadsword, or the Claymore if you have it, the Chattering Bone, the Go Figure, the Blast Furnace, the Bygones, the Inaugural Address, and if you want to go old school, the Vigilance Wing, or the Graviton Lance. Scout Rifles, Auto Rifles, SMGs, Sidearms, and Bows. I don't currently use any of them when I'm playing to win in comp. Some of these weapon types are getting an update on January 29th, keep an eye out, but if you use them currently, you can keep doing that if you want, but I kinda recommend maybe you reconsider. Again, not that you can't do well with them, but you might have an easier time using weapons that are very proven to be good on paper. In the special ammo department, shotguns are tier one. They are powerful, effective, and most of all, easy to use. Very not hard to use shotguns well in the current comp meta. Favorite shotguns depending on the role. We got the Dust Rock Blues up at the top, the Wishbringer, Hawthorns, Field Forged, uh, the Toil and Trouble, the Mindbender, and if all else fails, the Blue Botheration. On every one of these shotguns, you are looking for one of two barrels, rifled barrel or full choke. You are never looking for smooth bore. For shotgun stats, you want the most range possible every time, again without smooth bore. If you're a fusion rifle person, until January 29th, you have the Telesto. I know a lot of people are very angered by that weapon. Believe me, I get it. It's cheesy, and I am very much looking forward to the 29th when it's nerfed 
But until then, it is painfully easy to use and absurdly powerful, borderline unfair. Yotun, the Erentil FR4, the Wizened Rebuke, and the Loaded Question are also very good. Fusion rifles in comp are slightly less reliable and less seen than shotguns, with the exception of Telesto, possibly Yotun as well. Grenade launchers, these are very tricky to use well. If you can use them well, you can take a lot of people by surprise in comp. I still don't really recommend them unless you're playing on PC. They require a lot of practice. If you're really struggling to get the Luna's Howl or the Mountaintop, you should probably use a shotgun or maybe a fusion rifle. Sniper rifles. Okay, snipers are the siren's call of Destiny PvP. Not all the time. If you're a sniper and you're really good, don't get all uppity because you know exactly what I'm talking about. When used well, they are damned effective. If you're watching a great player use a sniper in PvP, it's like poetry in motion. Again though, they require a lot of work and practice in Destiny, and they have noticeable downsides. When you take damage while sniping, you flinch really hard, which makes it hard to shoot back, and you can get torn up by aggro players who ape in with shotguns. Teams that do well in the current comp meta are very aggressive. There are times to push in comp, and there are times to stay back, but the problem I see with most low comp rank snipers is that they are always way too passive and they get into trouble. If you're a diehard sniper, okay, keep at it. But again, I strongly recommend that you at least try a shotgun or maybe a fusion rifle, especially if you play with a controller. Power weapons, uh, swords, no, literally almost never. Swords are painfully underused and underpowered in the current PvP comp meta. They really need to be buffed because they are outshined by almost every other more effective power weapon option. Grenade launchers, anything with proximity detonation and the highest possible blast radius you can find. Linear fusion rifles, Maybe. I barely see these outside of PvE and Gambit. If you're a real crack shot and you really like them, then okay, go ahead and give them a go. But there are options out there that are both deadlier and much easier to use. Rocket launchers. Okay, very much yes. You want very high blast radius and cluster bomb together. Use Sins of the Past as kind of a uh, baseline for what makes a good PvP comp rocket launcher. Easy to get kills with rocket launchers? That is probably never going to change. Machine guns. Okay, not a bad choice. The only thing you have to really worry about is getting outgunned up close because machine guns have good time to kill, but it's not instant like a, you know, a shotgun. So you do have to be careful about dying and giving up the power ammo if you run a machine gun. Power weapons that get a unique shout out. The Wardcliffe Coil is a unique tier one power weapon. If you look at your weapon loadout and find that for kinetic and elemental, you are using two legendary weapons, there is almost no reason you should not be using the Wardcliffe Coil. Stupid powerful gun, easiest kills you will ever get in comp, requires almost no aiming at all. Tractor Cannon is also fairly high up there, and the Queen Breaker can also be worth a shout out of its own. But again, if you have the opportunity to use an exotic power weapon, you are borderline hurting yourself if you are not using the ward clip coil. Bullet point number three, what subclass do I use? My answer for this is going to be tied directly to the question, what has the best roaming super? Right now in the D2 comp meta, I want you to remember this phrase, roaming super stacking. Repeat that, roaming super stacking stacking. That is the easiest way to win games in the current D2 comp meta. You should be running a class that has a good roaming super and your gear should be jam packed with super mods, which stack together by the way. In a game of comp, the team that starts getting their supers first has a very big advantage. Out of both teams, if you get the very first super of the game, pop it, get some kills, now you've made some orbs, now your team gets the orbs and they get the second super of the game, and it turns into a big snowball effect. Especially in game types like Countdown or Survival, one super can literally make the difference between winning
winning a round and losing. Now, the other team eventually will get their supers and may launch a comeback, but no problem, because if you're snowballing hard enough and you're already in the lead, you will get your second wave of supers way before they do, and you can do it all over again. And yeah, roaming supers. I know Blade Barrage can be fun. I know Ward of Dawn has good potential use. I'm giving you the easiest path to rank up in comp, and you want roaming supers. Yeah, you can have a counter super on your team, like a Blade Barrage, but there's nothing worse than having your Blade Barrage before the enemy team has any supers of their own, and you do nothing but sit on your Blade Barrage the entire game, and then when someone finally does pop their super, and they charge you, and you try to use your counter super to shut them down, and you fail. Congratulations, you just wasted your super. Okay, what roaming supers do I recommend? Hunter, no question, hands down the Spectral Blades. Incredibly good, lasts forever, you can win entire rounds with literally no effort. Arcstaff is a good backup choice, but yeah, Spectral Blades probably number one. Warlock, a lot of good options here. Nova Warp, Bottom Tree Dawnblade, and Top Tree Stormcaller. For the Titan, the Sentinel, shield blocking can make orbs, and this roaming super is really great. Get in there, you shield whack a couple people around, if they're running away, you throw your shield. Hammer Titan is a good backup, and so is Code of the Missile. Sentinel Titan, though, also comes with the benefit of the Suppression Grenade to shut down the enemy team from chaining supers against you. Again, I know that good neutral gameplay is important, but when you cram four really good roaming supers onto one team in comp, each of them fully decked out with armor filled with super mods, trust me, me, watch and be amazed at how quickly that game is over if you all play correctly. Don't forget one of the following armor perks on top of having those super mods, either pump action, light reactor, or remote connection. Any perk at all that gives you more super energy with a certain type of weapon kill. Just watch how quickly you steamroll the other team. Okay, bullet point number four, and this ties in with number three. For the love of God, use supers wisely. Yeah, the game plan is you get them first and you use them to crush the other team, but be smart about it. There is almost never, ever, ever, ever a need to pop two roaming supers at the same time. Do one at a time, coordinate it with your team. For game types like Countdown and Survival, if you play well, you're only going to need maybe one super per round, two at the most. Survival can get a little dicey, especially if the team starts trying to counter your supers with theirs. If your team has a a heavy lead in either of those game types, no need to use your super. Your team has four lives remaining and the enemy team has zero remaining in survival. That's a big lead. There's no need to waste your super there. Hold on to it for the next round. And it works the other way. Are you at zero lives remaining and the enemy team is sitting at four lives? Unless it's the very last round and you'll lose it if you don't pop it, do not waste your super. Supers are not, in my opinion, to be wasted as a type of, oh, maybe I can get a sick comeback mechanic. No. Supers are to be used when you and the enemy team are on even footing and you want to launch your team way ahead right away and get a big advantage. In countdown, at the beginning of the round, get close, pop it, and rip them to pieces. Not when it's just you left alive in a daring 1v4 attempt. That is stupid. You're going to get team shot, you're going to die, and you're going to lose that round and you just wasted your super. In survival, are you and the team both at the same number? of lives, especially at the beginning of the round, great, pop that super and annihilate them. It only put you up by two or three lives total, great, doesn't matter, well done. Your team is now in the lead, you can now play for power ammo, play smart, and use your life advantage. In control, use supers in one of two ways. Number one, you have two zones and the enemy has one. Even if you're already in the lead, it doesn't matter. Use it right away and get those kills for even more points on the board. There is nothing wrong with securing your lead even harder in control. Faster you use your super to farm people, the faster you can work on getting your next super. Or if you're really behind and you really, really need to capture a zone, you can pop super to clean out the enemy team and regain your two zone lead. In Clash, use your super whenever, ideally as fast as you can so you can work on getting your next super. If at all possible, try to use your super around controlling the power ammo. Bullet point number five, specific maps and game types. All right, this is a little tricky. I'm gonna try to go through a few examples relatively quickly. For control, you want two zones 
zones, almost never do you want three. Keep your enemy spawning in one location while maintaining control of two zones and keep farming them. Make sure you are continuously locking down the power ammo on spawn. Going to very quickly go through each map. Control on Legion's Gulch. You want territories A and C, never B. You want the enemy team to lose the opening engagement and you want them to settle for B while you and your team continuously control A and C. Endless Veil, the team that does the best job controlling Zone B will win. Zone B gives the best map control and control of the power ammo. You control B, you win the game. The Dead Cliffs, you want C and B. Or if you're in a pinch, you can hold A and B. Ideally though, you want C and B and you want to keep your enemy spawning back in the A spawn zone. Don't push in too hard, let them stay there and keep farming them. If you push too hard, they may worm their way out into zone C and you may begin to lose control. Wormhaven, if you control zone B, you win the game. First minute of this game is crucial. You have to win that opening push and lock down zone B. In the event that you lose control of B, don't keep funneling into the middle and getting crushed. Try to sneak around the outside of the map and get both A and C and force the other team out of the middle so you can reclaim B. Burnout, you want A and C, never B. You want to force the enemy team to settle for zone B, which is outside, while your team maintains total inside control where the power ammo is. Do not capture zone B unless you are about to get power played and desperately need something. Did I leave any out? Hard to remember which control maps are in comp and which are in quick play. If I left out any comp control maps, please let me know down in the comment section and I'll write it up later. Okay, for countdown on offense, pick a direction with your team and everyone goes that way. Have one captain on your team be the shot caller, whoever the shot caller is on your team, there's usually one. All of you go the same way together and play smart. Do not blindly rush in towards the bomb with the goal of arming it right away. Your goal in countdown on offense is to play smart and patient and kill one person on the other team before anyone on your team gets picked off. Getting the first kill in countdown is huge. Don't get picked off. If the enemy team is all four defending the way that your team went, bring it back, rotate around, and go the other way. You do not always need to arm to win in countdown. On defense, find out which way the enemy is going. We usually have two teams of two. Uh, one team of two will go to each bomb. Once we know for sure which way the enemy is coming, we all have the entire team regroup and go that way to defend together. And emote around corners. I know it's cheesy, but again, dying first in countdown is very, very bad. If you get picked off because you poked your head out and got destroyed, your team is now at a disadvantage. Your first goal on defense is to emote peek and find where the enemy is going. Once you have that information, you can go on from there. For survival, control the map, and by that, I mean control the power ammo. If you can continually lock down the power ammo, you are in a great position to win. Play smart, get picks with your team, and don't throw lives away if you have the advantage. If you have a roaming super, use it to open up the round, especially if the enemy team doesn't have any super at all to counter you. Once you have a comfortable life lead in that round, don't waste any more supers unless they catch up. For both survival and countdown, any game type where you have limited lives, if there is one enemy remaining, for the love of God, push that enemy together. Do you know how many easy games I've seen get thrown away because two or three players charged a lone enemy one at a time. Way too many to count. And sometimes your teammates will be like, oh, but uh, I was trying to flank him. Why? There's literally two or sometimes even three of you. What, do you think he's carrying two shotguns, one in each hand? He can only shoot so fast. Push him together from the same angle even. Just drown him in bullets. Ape the life out of him. There's no need to flank, get tactical or fancy if it's just one guy. Guy. Do you have the number advantage? Then hold hands, charge in together, and destroy him. For clash, control the power ammo and chain supers. Like most game types, your goal is to get the very first super and then use it to annihilate the other team and create a snowball effect. Make sure that you're telling your teammates where the orbs of light are and play coordinated. Bullet point number six, final piece of advice, and I say it every time I give advice on really winning in PvP. Communicate 
communication is key. And I know you're rolling your eyes because everyone says that, but it's true. Talking with your team constantly is the key to winning. Tell your teammates what is going on. Where did you get killed from? How many enemies were shooting you? What kind of guns do they have? Do they have their super? Are they baiting? Are they pushing? Say anything. If you have a teammate who constantly complains and says annoying, frustrating things after every single time they die, you have to tell your friend to shut the f*** up. Dying and saying things like, Oh, come on, that's bullshit. How did that kill me? Shut up. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a blowout victory and you're winning so badly that you don't really need to communicate anymore, but when you're in crunch mode, trying to win games and get your Luna, your teammate whining like that is going to clog up the communication highway. Tell your teammate to shut up and stick to the callouts and he or she can complain later when the game is over. And that's it. Sorry about the uh, potential information overload. Tried really hard to include all the important things. I know a lot of people are intimidated by comp, but you can go in there, you can learn, and you can win. Go get a team together, and remember, patience, patience, patience. Teamwork takes time to develop, but if you go in with a game plan, you can work on it and make it happen. Please, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button. It is free, and it helps me out a lot. If you enjoyed today's content, give the video a like, and why not, if you're looking for teammates in comp, as I mentioned before, go down in the comment section, share your tag and your platform. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you learned something. See you next time.